Hey, welcome to Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Huynh Duet Dao, and I'm speaking with... David Gonzalez. And I am currently in London for DroidCon London, yeah. where both David and I are speaking. David, where are you based, and how did you get started in Android? I'm based here in London. I've been here for the last four years, mm -hmm. and I started on Android seven years ago. Oh, wow. I was in, in uni, and I had to choose my dissertation for mm -hmm. a computer science degree, mm -hmm. and I had no idea what to do. Everybody was doing websites, and I like, that's so boring. And then <laughs> a tutor said, oh, there's this thing called Android. Do you mm -hmm. want to try so I was looking into it, and I didn't have a Mac at the time, so I couldn't do iOS. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started looking into Android, and you could do so many cool stuff. That's so new. This is not just a website. It's something on your phone. Mm -hmm. And that's how I started. Oh, that's amazing. So all the way from you. So you were like, came around around Gingerbread, Froyo, something like that? No, that was before. It was the 0 0.3 and the emulator. Oh, my gosh. That was not... It was my first phone was the HTC Magic. Oh, my gosh. That was the first yeah. one that got into Spain, because the Nokia uh, the, the M1 wasn't available. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome. What are you doing now? Um, I'm working for Help Scout right now. Mm -hmm. And Help Scout is an online platform to help doing customer support. Mm -hmm. So we're building experiences for our customers so they can then support their customers mm -hmm. and they don't have to hate being in support. <laughs> Trello is a client. Oh, yes, we are. Hey, I actually really hey. do like Help Scout. We, some bugs occasionally come in from Help Scout. I don't, you know, I don't because know, sometimes. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Am I right in that you work often by yourself? Yes, it's I'm I'm the only one in the team right now, mm. and they're all based in the U.S. and all the mobile team is based in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and but the company is 100% remote, so everybody works from their homes or co-working spaces. Mm -hmm. So it's always a bit of a challenge mm -hmm. to being used to like it was before in an office with a lot of people and you have meetings every day, mm -hmm. and now I meet with myself in my pajamas, so it's not <laughs> the same thing. But yeah, I, I like that too. Like I so I was a contractor for several years before. Uh, starting my current right. job, but I've been remote for the last eight years as well. And so I am also a pajama meeting type person. Yeah. Um, but I think what, and I, I actually, when I was contracting, I worked on a couple of projects um, alone as well. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, um, and we were talking about this a little bit before, that one of the challenges is, I guess when you're the one person, you get to make all the decisions, but yeah. I feel like with all that power comes some responsibility yeah, and some, I don't know, some decisions that you have to make. Yes. So what I wanted to ask you, David, is like when you're on a project mm -hmm. and you are the king of your kingdom, yeah. the sole developer, <laughs> what kind of challenges do you face or what kind of questions do you ask yourself when you're trying to maybe start a project and, and pick out architectures and, and right. other tools um, that you're using? If, with Help Scout, it was a completely a greenfield project, so I didn't have any legacy code to maintain, which is great. Yay. But then it's like, oh, there's nothing done. Mm -hmm. So now you have to pick up everything that's been on iOS and, and do it in, in a proper amount of time. So it's hard to make the decisions towards what do you invest your time in. Mm -hmm. Because you need to set up a CI environment so you can deploy things. You mm -hmm. have to prepare the architecture of your app. Mm -hmm. You have to use the language of your app. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it Java? Is it Kotlin? <laughs> is it Scala? Because you can use anything. Mm -hmm. And it's always difficult to make the decision. And you have to look at the company, what other workers are there. Mm -hmm. And I could say, no, I could start in Kotlin because that's it's a nice thing. It's much nicer language. It gives you much more power than you have with Java. But mm -hmm. then... If I was to leave the company in six months, right. they need to hire somebody who knows Kotlin mm -hmm. and understands what I've done. Mm -hmm. And if I'm learning Kotlin at the same time I'm developing something, it's going to be a huge mess. Mm -hmm. So that's the, 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 one of the big challenges that you have. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So it's not just about doing everything that you want or always necessarily yes. using cutting edge, but you have to. F you have sounds like you have a responsibility. Yeah, exactly. To leave a good code base. Interesting. <laughs> engineers, right? And you want to be professional so you can just do things because they are cool or they are hyped or it's a new library. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. have to think in the long term and mm -hmm. those decisions affect not just your project but the whole company. Mm -hmm. So do you try to kind of do, go at it like kind of think things out from the beginning or is there some like kind of organic part to the process where you try something, you find it doesn't quite fit and change hmm. it or is it a little, it kind of, it does it yes. depend? I've changed a lot of things like the process to like how to commit codes mm -hmm. in terms of how to open pull requests to mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. It's like you're, you're playing, you're the only one doing so I, do I review myself or how do you do that? Mm -hmm. and, and that's how I've been, I've been doing, I've been changing a lot of stuff like that mm -hmm. and now I think I found a way that I'm, and I'm happy with it mm -hmm. and, and, and that's it, you have to play and, and try new things out. You're the only one so you have time to try new things mm -hmm. and it pays off to invest time on that. So w is there a review process when you're kind of yeah. a single developer? I mean like do you have do you sit on one side of the table and then argue with yourself on the other yes. side of the table? I or? change my shirt and then I go somewhere <laughs> like, oh, I just, but basically what I do is I would open pull requests as if I was working with another part of the team mm -hmm. and I would review it two or three years later. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. So I would, in the meantime, I would do something else. Mm -hmm. And then I would come back after two or three days and say, okay, what is this? Mm -hmm. And then I would put comments, like if I was reviewing somebody else. Yeah, yeah. And then I would look at it and say, oh, well, maybe I want to change this or change that. And that's how it, it's a slower process. Like mm -hmm. it's not a uh, fast uh, mm -hmm. response, mm -hmm. but pays off when your mind is doing something else. Mm -hmm. Then I'm like, oh, wait, why was I using this preference if I could be using a bundle or something similar to mm -hmm. that? What's the process for actually releasing features? Do you actually keep the code open for some time before you yeah. have some distance from it? So does that, does that overall, does that make your development process slower or is it... And, I, or like, I guess, deployment slower as the well. The deployment might be slower, but mm -hmm. I know if I would just ship things mm -hmm. and then commit to master and be happy with it, mm -hmm. then I know that there's a technical that I would be adding to it will be bigger. Mm -hmm. And then in the long term, I would have to come back and say, what is, what is this? <laughs> so, so it pays off. But I guess it's more of a startup time. So you have a, like, the initial period where you're trying yes. to crank out some code. But once you start getting into the process, <laughs> once the code actually ships, you're probably shipping out at a regular yeah, schedule Yeah, because once your architecture is already in place, you know, if I have to add a new feature, I'm, I'm trying to follow the clean architecture your pattern so mm -hmm. if I have to use a new feature I have a use case or more than use cases mm -hmm. and then I will be adding them all the same way mm -hmm. and it's faster once you have the whole thing set up but at the beginning you have a, like a long term saying this is what I want to achieve mm -hmm. but I cannot just add the add dagger to in the first day I'm right. going to have like a static class that does everything and mm -hmm. then when it's too big then I will move to, to add dagger or, or and that's like an organic process. That's really cool. I I feel like as developers, I know that I've looked at code that I've written three years ago, and sometimes think? I won't even know that. No, I, <laughs> sometimes I'll look at code like, who did that? And I'll Crazy look at, person. get blame. Oh, that it was, was me. me. <laughs> so I feel like you've just formalized that process and given yeah. yourself a structure to, rather than just say, oh, I'm going to delete that before anyone sees yeah. that, you actually are giving a process where you can kind of think through your decisions even, and, and reevaluate. Even later, maybe like, on a Monday, you just have like a rough weekend and you can't really <laughs> think straight. And then you mm -hmm. look at it on Friday and like, oh, this is so much easier. What am I trying to do? Mm -hmm. So it's 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 nice to have this conversation with yourself from the past, mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> so I, I feel like one of the benefits, like I, I, I generally have liked working on projects of my own, but also projects on a team. And I feel like one of the big benefits when you work with other people is getting different ideas yeah. in, you know, like people, some people are kind of interested maybe in Kotlin, but mm -hmm. you might not be at the moment. And someone is like, hey, why don't we use Kotlin? And you can kind of evaluate that. How do you, as a lone developer, kind of bring in those <laughs> new ideas? You have to do a lot of research or? Yes, and there's Slack has changed my life. <laughs> and it's like, there's so many smart people on there. You can say, hey, do you have a minute? What do you think about this? Mm -hmm. And also in the, the Spanish community, there's a lot of developers. Now we have like a Slack with all this, and we just talk about stuff. Mm -hmm. And it is to like, hey, I'm trying to do this. Do you have any idea? Mm -hmm. And then smart people would say, hey, well, have you tried this? Have you tried yeah. that? Mm -hmm. And then it's not a formal review. You cannot go and share the code. Right. But it gives you ideas. Oh, maybe I should do it in a different way. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. So definitely yeah. kind of supplementing like your individual yeah. awesomeness with awesomeness from other people. Because if, if you're the only one, it's very hard. You're not learning from anybody. Yeah. So yeah, you need exactly. to learn Absolutely. from somebody else. Uh, otherwise, mm -hmm. you're going to be stuck in your own knowledge forever so even when you're a solo developer you're not always alone as long yeah. as you're like looking out for you could be looking crazy out. like not, you don't talk to anybody in the whole day and then your wife comes home or you go like what is this <laughs> do something so for any of you who are you know solo developers in a project you are not alone no and you don't I don't have you don't have to go PR list I guess as well in your code. No, the don't don't commit to master. Yeah, you know, life <laughs> just because that. you can. No, don't do it. Yeah, <laughs> just because nobody's gonna say no. I don't accept your pull request. Don't do it. <laughs> so you're speaking. You actually are giving two. David is giving yes. two talks this week at JoyCon London. Um, yeah. and your talks are on. Do you mind telling us what your talks? The are? The lighting talk is about what we're talking about now, like oh, working cool. remote and what things I've tried and haven't worked, or things mm -hmm. that I've tried and worked, mm -hmm. and see if somebody else has any ideas. Mm -hmm. And then the second talk is about the Android Architecture Blueprints project. If you don't know about it, go and look at GitHub, Google Sample, slash Android Dash Architecture. Uh, Jose Alterica's salary is depending on the stars that you get on that repo. Mm -hmm. So he, he needs to go and, and get more stars. And <laughs> it's a very interesting project that talk about different ways to build the same app. Mm -hmm. and using MVP and BVM and all the different patterns mm -hmm. and people give feedback and discuss and, and have their own ideas. Oh, that sounds great. I feel like that's obviously a very important question. Which yeah. architecture do you use? And yeah. we talk about this a lot in our community. <laughs> so having a project where people are openly discussing it seems really, yeah. sounds really cool. We will post a link to that in the show yes. notes, so go check it out. And well, thank you, David, thank for, you. for joining us. If people wanted to find you on the internet, how can they do that? Uh, it's at DG Gonzalez. I'll put the link because it's very awkward. Awesome. We'll have and it right here. yes, I'm, I'm <laughs> down the GDE as well, so you can find me on the listing as well. So definitely um, 
ask David any advice yes. if you are a solo worker or if you're not a solo yes. worker. And thanks again, David. Thank you. And thank you all. And we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.